Thank you all for coming. Um, 2010 is going to be the world's hugest Republican year. And it's not because our party is so well led. <laughs> it's that we have a person who is bravely, I got this, who is bravely staking out, can you hear me back there? Who is bravely staking out the turf for our party, pointing the way, leading us where we have to go, and energizing us to a, to a fever pitch. And his name is Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, that's a whole lot better than anybody we could have on our side energizing us. Because he's making so clear how serious the stakes are. Now, one of the nice things about Massachusetts is that you are pointing the way. We didn't know what two-month wait periods to see primary care physicians was like until you showed us. <laughs> we didn't know what having the elderly not get the surgery they need because there's a shortage of doctors until you showed us. And we didn't know what tripling the estimate of public care was until you paved the way. <laughs> so Massachusetts is sort of like Michigan. You know, Michigan had a recession before anybody else did. And, and now you all are showing us the way in the future. And uh, we're trying very hard to uh, not copy your example. Um, I really believe for the first time that we have a serious chance uh, of defeating this health care bill. Because the House has passed a bill the Senate can't possibly pass. And the Senate is about to pass a bill the House can't possibly pass. So you really need to get a bill that Dennis Kucinich and Joe Lieberman agree on. <laughs> which ain't going to be easy. And when you look at the issues about will this be financed by a tax increase, what penalty will be imposed on kids that don't want to buy insurance, how deep will the subsidy be, how much out of pocket are they going to have to pay, how much are you going to cut from Medicare, are you going to eliminate the Medicare Advantage program, what happens when doctors and hospitals say, Go fly a kite. I'm not going to treat Medicare patients because you're cutting the reimbursement rate somewhat below my bus fare to get into work in the morning. And <laughs> when all of that stuff happens, it's going to become very clear to people what a disaster this bill really is. And we'll have a nice long time to think about it because it will take weeks and months for that conference committee to iron out the differences between the two bills. And when it goes back to the Senate, it needs 60 votes again, which means, in effect, Joe Lieberman has a veto. And when it goes back to the House, it's got to have a majority, which means the liberal left-wing Democrats, in a sense, have a veto. And those issues are going to delay this bill for a long time. And as the delay happens, Election Day gets closer and closer, and we get more of an opportunity for people to really see what this bill does that you have to buy insurance. You're required to. And the, it isn't just catastrophic insurance. You just can't go out and say, well, if I get hit by a bus, I want to be covered. No, you've got to buy soup to nuts, 100% health insurance, costing $15,000 a year in premiums. And if you don't, you pay a fine to the government of 2.5% of your income. It's like you just jumped up to a new tax bracket. And if you don't, that's tax evasion. And it's punishable by up to five years in jail. <laughs> Can you imagine the prison yard of the future? What are you in for? Murder, rape, you? I didn't have health insurance. <laughs> but without those penalties, people aren't going to buy insurance they don't need. And what's going to happen then is that the young people will say, I'll just pay the fine. Uh, and I'm not going to get it this year or the next 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 year. And if eight years from now I get hit by a bus, well, then I'll sign up for the insurance. 
and they have to take me, and they can't charge me a higher premium. But I don't have those seven or eight years of, of added up premiums to defray the cost of treating me after I got crashed into by the bus. So who's going to pay that? You don't have all my stuff saved up over the years when I didn't need the insurance because I didn't buy it. The answer is all of us are going to pay it in higher insurance rates, estimated to be $2,000 a year higher to meet that cost. And then just in case that isn't bad enough, they're going to tax my insurance premiums 40%. And there's a threshold now. If you're over 8,000 in premiums a year, about 650 a, a month, for an individual, or 21,000 for a family, about, um, what does that work out to? About 13 or 14, 1,500 a month, maybe 1,700 a month. Once you get over those levels, you have to pay a 40% tax of your insurance premiums. But it's not indexed for inflation. It's indexed for regular inflation, but not medical inflation. So in the first year of this wonderful program, 14% of American households are going to have to pay this tax, basically any household making more than a hundred and a quarter. After four years, a quarter of Americans are going to have to pay the tax, basically any household making more than a hundred. And after five years, a third are going to have to pay the tax, basically any household over 75000 so he's going to hold down the cost of health insurance by taxing it 40% and driving it up by $2,000. And then he's going to raise further money by taxing medical devices. You know, the prosthetic limbs that those brave men and women wear if they come home from combat in Iraq and Afghanistan and lost a leg or an arm. He's going to tax them. And the automated wheelchairs, he's going to tax them. And hearing aids, he's going to tax them. And pacemakers, he's going to tax them. Arterial stents they put in your heart arteries so you don't drop dead, they're going to be taxed too. And then he's going to have the best of all, a tax on sick people. <laughs> it really is. Right now, you, have to pay, you can deduct any medical expense that exceeds 7.5% of your income. He's going to raise that to 10 so imagine how sick you have to be for one out of ten of your pre-tax dollars to go for medical expenses. If that's your situation, he's going to tax you on two and a half percent of your income that now is exempt, about six or seven hundred dollars a year a person. A tax on the sickest people in the country. And then what he's going to do is he's going to cut Medicare by five hundred billion dollars. Now the Department of Health and Human Services that works for Obama just released a report saying that they believe this will drive huge numbers of doctors and hospitals and nursing homes to refuse to accept Medicare payments uh, because the reimbursement rate is too low and people are just not going to be able to get the medical care that they need. And then on top of that, he's going to take 36 million people that don't have health insurance and suddenly he's going to cover them without any new doctors, without any new nurses. In fact, with fewer doctors and nurses because the, uh, because the, rates are gonna, the reimbursement rates will decline and more people are going to retire and fewer people will enter the profession. So this sets in motion a downward spiral like you've had in Canada where fewer and fewer people practice medicine, more and more retire, more and more patients need care, the care is rationed out more and more, and the spiral continues. So that when health insurance changes came to Canada 20 years ago, <coughs> Canada ranked second in the world to the United States in the ratio of doctors to population. Now it ranks 26th, and that's exactly the downward spiral that we're about to go on, courtesy of Obama. But the more people learn about this bill, the more they're turned off it. And I believe that what's going to happen is that after it passes the House, which it has, and then it's going to pass the Senate, but in a totally different version, it's going to go to a conference committee and they're going to take months to reach an agreement. And as they dicker and as they fight and as they talk about public option versus no coverage, abortion versus not, a stiff fine if you don't buy insurance versus a weak one, a dramatic subsidy if, to help you buy insurance versus holding down the cost of the legislation, funding it with a tax increase versus the increase tax on premiums, all of those issues play out. 
they're going to take a long time to be settled until you can get Kucinich and Lieberman on the same bill. And as that happens, more and more information is going to come out about how terrible this bill is, about how it's going to really affect people, and its numbers are going to drop and drop and drop. And I think there's a very, very good chance of us defeating this bill.